I've always had a fondness for small town graveyards. There's something so peaceful about them, about their remoteness and their muteness, about the way the moon and stars watch over them, about the whispering of the wind, and of the far-off birds. Maybe that's why I'm relieved that my truck died in front of one. I'm not as nervous as I should be, a woman, alone, out in the country with no gas left in her engine. I feel almost relieved as I get out of the pickup, cell phone in hand, and walk towards the iron fence that surrounds the cluster of tombstones. It's twilight. Everything is gold and rose, beautiful in a forlorn way. The sun still warms the earth, despite a chill that hovers around me. I'm thankful for my sweater. Everything is going to be okay. I think to myself as I look down at my phone. I still have no service. I'll call dad and he'll drive out to rescue me. My maps app says that his house is 25 minutes from here. If he picks up right away, I'll barely be late for dinner. I arrive at the iron fence that skirts the graveyard and lean on it as I dial dad's home phone. It rings and goes to the answering machine. Hey dad, I say. You're probably working in the garage like you said, but I'm on my way to your place and I was stupid and forgot gas. So I'm stranded. Please call me when you get this. I'm going to try your cell now. Love you. Bye. Dad's cell doesn't pick up. It goes straight to voicemail. I sigh. This isn't unusual. My dad hates using technology. Moving out to the country was a smart move for a hermit like him. He'll be happy here. With dad not picking up his phone though, I'll need to make another plan. The town this graveyard belongs to, the town I passed about 20 minutes back, is probably a good hour on foot, perhaps more. I've definitely been speeding on these back roads. Dad's house, on the other hand, might be a further walk, and I'm not sure if my phone's battery will last that long. It's at 40%. I'll need my phone to look at directions. I shiver. It's getting a little colder and a little darker. Now I'm feeling worried. I decide to spam dad's landline until he picks up. As the phone rings again and again, I meander over to the entrance of the graveyard. The gate's unlocked and ajar. I wander in and start inching my way down a row of headstones. Dad still isn't picking up. I half expected this, since he always works with earplugs in and had mentioned that he was going to be drilling today in the garage. Finally, I reach the end of the row. There's a fresh mound with a simple wooden cross. No flowers. I squat in front of it and hang up my phone. My fingers brush against the damp earth. It's fine and soft and calms me a little, as I think. Walk back to town, or try to get to Dad's. Then I have an idea. I stand up and start walking around, craning my neck to see if there are any houses. If I'm in luck, there will be a farm or an acreage out here. And if they don't have spare gas, which they should, at least they'll have a phone I can use. Dad's bound to check his calls when he finishes his project and I still haven't arrived. In the deepening gloom, it's hard to make out any definitive shapes on the horizon, but finally, I spot a building just a few miles to the east. It's small, but it's definitely a house. I breathe a sigh of relief and pocket my phone. Just as I turn to make my way towards the entrance, I hear a high-pitched noise and freeze. It's coming from the corner of the graveyard opposite me, and... And it sounds like whistling. Slowly, I turn my head. I don't see anyone. The whistling continues with no definite rhythm, and that's when I realize it isn't a person making that noise, but an animal possibly a wounded one. I jog in the direction of the sound and stop a few feet from it in case it's something like a fox or badger. That would lash out if hurt, but to my surprise, I see a long red ribbon with a loop at the end. A leash. I dash the last few feet and see, huddled against a stone, a small black body. It's a puppy. A spaniel, I think. It's whimpering. Little guy? I croon, crouching down and putting my hand out for him to sniff. Where did your owner go? As the question passes my lips, I feel a pang of fear. 
Who would leave a brand new puppy out here willingly? Even if the creature hadn't had a leash on, the circumstances would be odd. But it does. And... The leash isn't even fastened to anything. It's trailing on the ground, as if someone was on an early evening walk and... I shuddered. Vanished. Don't think about that now. I tell myself, just take the dog and get to the house. It's getting dark. I scoop the little guy up. He doesn't protest much. I decide to carry him with me instead of leaving him in the truck, since he weighs almost nothing at all. How long has he been here? I wonder. When's the last time he ate? I go back to my truck to fetch my phone charger. Maybe I can use an outlet when I get to the house. I empty my purse of everything but my wallet and put my scarf inside. I tuck the puppy in the folds of the scarf. Then I hug the purse to my chest, lock the doors, and start down the road. As I walk, the last of the twilight disappears completely. It becomes dark quickly. The ditches on either side of the gravel road turn to pools of inky blackness. The fields lose their glow and begin to bleed into the sky until the horizon loses its definition. Since I'm walking as quickly as possible, I make good time to the house. To my utter relief, a light is on in one of the windows and a vehicle is parked in the drive. I climb the steps to the door. They're old and rickety, made of rotting wood. And there's a weird smell in the air. Not a good smell. The front door looks very old and worn. A thick blanket covers the window so that the light inside is barely visible at all. I steal myself and knock. Following the knock, there is absolutely no sound. The puppy starts to whine against my chest. My stomach turns into a cold knot. The hairs on my neck rise. I feel odd up here on the threshold, exposed and vulnerable. I swallow and knock again. Again, there is no sound from within. I wait a moment more and knock as loudly as I can. Finally, I hear something happening inside. There is a slow shuffling. A slow and heavy and rhythmic shuffling that reminds me of an execution drum. I stiffen. Don't lose your mind. I tell myself. They're just footsteps. Suddenly, the door opens. A short, squat woman stands before me. She looks exactly like a classic fairy tale witch, right down to the wart on her nose. Her skin is mottled and her eyes are milky, the pupils slightly uneven. She does not say anything. She simply looks at me. I don't like her. Hi, I say with a nervous laugh. My truck ran out of gas and I was wondering if you had some. The woman dips her head once. A nod? She closes the door and I'm left standing, quaking, with the puppy still whimpering in my arms. Time goes by. The nasty smell is stuck in my nostrils. I inspect the room that has the light on. It's the kitchen. On the stove, there's an enormous steel pot. In the pot, there's a rusty red, bubbling substance. I squint and try to focus more. A couple bones are sticking out of it. I bite my lip hard to keep my imagination running wild. No, she is not cooking a person on the stove. The door is flung open and I jump. The woman stands in front of me again, holding a large red jug. She holds it out to me. Behind her, hanging from the ceiling. I can now see bundles of sticks and herbs, twisting slowly in a non-existent wind. The pungent smell assaults my nostrils. I take the gasoline and nod. Good night, I say, and turn to go down the stairs. Does that puppy belong to you? says a gravelly voice behind me. I turn to see the woman staring at me still. She hasn't closed the door. Her milky eyes are sharp. I pause. Something about her tone. Her stare makes my flesh crawl. Yeah, I lie. Then I turn and speed walk down the drive. I turn around to look back at the house when I reach the road. The woman still stands in the open doorway. A sickly yellow light flickering behind her, as if some nearby room is filled with candles. I stare back at her. At last, she closes the door. 
I get onto the road and walk hurriedly until her house is a good distance behind me. Then I run the rest of the way to my truck, heart pounding. Thank God for the gasoline. In no time, me and the puppy are hurtling down the road. My phone is at 30% now, but it guides me to dad's house just fine with battery to spare. Dad's new house is nice. The light in the garage is on, but when I walk by it on the way to the front door, I hear no drill. Odd. I pull up my phone and there are three missed calls, all from dad's cell. I get to the door and notice there is a note taped to it. Dear Jen, I might be back a little later than seven. Took the new puppy for a walk. You're going to love him. Hugs. Dad. Takes a minute for the words to register after I read them. Then I whip out my phone and look at the missed calls. Four of them now. All dad. I dial him back immediately. The phone rings twice then picks up. Nobody says hello and there's a weird sort of interference in the background. Hello? Hello? Dad? I breathe. No response. Dad? I say loudly. Are you okay? I wait. The weird sound goes on. A continuous, bubbling sound. Like soup, simmering on a stove. I only use his heart and ribs. Says a thick, phlegmy voice on the other end. I buried the rest. Then the call drops.